Hello everyone. Welcome to this in-depth tutorial and demo on how to set up and run a VideoCoin network worker. The first thing you'd want to do is go to docs.videocoin.network. Here we've created a new page called setting up a VideoCoin worker. This doc page has all the details and everything that I'm going to do now is covered in depth over here. Um, it's actually very simple to run a VideoCoin worker. You'll probably be done and up and running in about five minutes. And that's what we'll see here. The first thing you have to do is create a VideoCoin Studio account. If you don't have one, just log, um, land at videocoin.network and then create on sign up and then you can create an account. And then once you log in, you'll be welcomed with a page. Now, um, you're familiar with the streams interface in the past, uh, but now from K2 release, we've added a new interface element um, called the workers tab. So when you click on the workers tab, you'll see that as of now, I have no workers set up, but you can clearly see a huge orange button here saying new worker. When you click on a new worker, it now creates a new worker for you. And it's telling you that this it requires setup. I also gave it a name, uh, automatically generated. And it said, it gave it a client ID. And it said system config setup required. So it's also interesting for us to go and see this in, uh, in the video call network worker. So this is one of our new features that we've launched in K2, where you can see all of the worker nodes on the VideoCon network. Um, in other videos, I've gone in depth on what these offline workers mean, but um, in, at a high level, offline workers mean that the workers are on, that have, been, um, that have been registered on the network, but have not been set up. So in this case, I just now created a new worker called Lingering Wildflower, which was automatically generated for us, and it's shown up here at the top of the VideoCon worker nodes. I'm just going to give this a different name so that we can track it. I'm going to call it Dave Dutta's worker and save changes. Now we can go and refresh the, oh, we don't even have to refresh in real time. Our worker nodes get refreshed and then um, the name Dave Dutta's worker now shows up as one of the worker nodes here. So now it's still saying system config setup required. So this is something that we'll, we'll go over in just a bit, but it is important for you to know um, that um, uh, it is super easy for you to create a new worker. One of the main things that you have to notice in this worker creation interface is literally the client ID. So this is how you'll use, this, this is how the VideoCon network will know who this client belongs to and how the payments need to be made and um, uh, for uh, rewards need to be made for the work that is done on the network and all of that. But this client ID is what ties everything together back into the VideoCon network. So you need to keep an eye on the client ID. And the next thing I'm gonna do is pull the Docker image. So the Docker image is something, again, we published for the K2 release. It's publicly available in, um, in the Docker Hub under the VideoCon network organization. This is linked to in the docs page right here in the, um, right here under the huge Docker button. Uh, but you can get the Docker image from there. Um, and uh, what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste everything in the docs here. So it's really easy for you to replicate. Um, so first thing we'll have to do is pull the VideoCon worker. And I'm gonna hit that command right now. And as you can see to your left, the Docker image is getting pulled. And it was pretty fast because it's a really small image and very efficient. So it gets pulled that and um, now that Docker image is available. So the next thing you want to do is set up an environment file uh, with um, the client ID so that the worker knows how to find its client ID, right? So like you need to create a file, anything, you can call it anything. I'm gonna, I've called it vars. So in this, um, the docs page explains each one of these fields in detail, but like there's three main things that you have to look at here. One is the key file, secret, and the client ID. Your key file is basically the account, the Ethereum wallet account that you want, Ethereum um, wallet account that you want to use um, for your worker. Uh, I say Ethereum wallet account because um, the VideoCoin wallet is 100% compatible with the Ethereum wallet account. So if you create an Ethereum key file, you can just use that here. Uh, and that's what we, the docs page also recommends you do. You can either use get or key file generate and then generate a key file and copy and paste the contents of that into the key here. And then the secret is just literally your key file password. So even though here you're putting the key file and password, remember that this is just a local settings file and it's only locally exposed to your Docker container 
um, as an environment variable. So there's really nothing to worry about here because this is not going to reach your, um, uh, it's, it's not going to be sent to the server or anything. So these secret and uh, key file is meant to be used locally so that the worker can sign transactions whenever it is submitting proofs, whenever it is, whenever it is um, uh, accepting work, um, submitting proofs, and then, val uh, and then waiting for proof validation. And all of these are transactions that require signatures on, and that's what the secret and key is used uh, to do. And also when, when they are rewarded, you reward it using the same address on the VideoCoin native blockchain, as well as on the third-party uh, payments provider blockchain. And the way third-party payments provider will work, um, we'll cover that in depth during Everest release, but as of now, um, this is what uh, your account does. And then comes the main important part here, which is the client ID. So like we discussed, um, this is some from an old client ID that I was using. Um, what you want to do is take your client ID from VideoCoin Studio. So I'm just going to copy this from here and paste it here. And so this now tells how this now tells the worker how to find the client ID because now you paste you you um, configured that into the variable file. So now that is done. What we will do next is we will go to um, the next step here in the um, docs page, which is literally run the worker. So what we'll do is we'll take, take the worker. Um, and before we run it, I want to point a few things out for you. One is if you can see here, system configuration is saying setup required, which means that this worker has never come online. The video call network knows nothing about this worker. So saying setup required, it's not there. And on the workers page here, Dave Zotas worker is new, meaning it's not been set up and it's offline. It's with the network has never seen it before. So what we'll do now is I copied the Docker command to run the worker. I'm going to paste it here. So in this Docker command, all it's doing is it's taking the environment variable file that I just now created. And uh, looks like I misspelled worker. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is now run the worker and keep an eye on the terminal here. So it's now saying it's getting the starting the transcoder and that's it. The worker is now running, so it's waiting for a task. So I'm running this Docker container in the, um, in the terminal, uh, but you can run this in the background as, as a process or as a daemon process is a Docker container and you can run it in Kubernetes. You can do anything you want with this one, but right now I'm just running it on the terminal. And you, as you can see, the the worker that's running, it's just polling the video card network for any work. Right now it doesn't get any work, so it's just saying no task. And, and a very interesting thing has happened on the right-hand side of the worker window also. As you can see now, Devdatta's worker is idle and online, right? So um, that's cool. And let's go see what's happening here. So now you remember how it was saying setup required, but now because the uh, worker came online and this is, I'm, I'm on a Mac here. So the worker reported its, um, its uh, number of CPUs, what kind of RAM it had, what the CPU speed is and all of that and reported it back to the VideoCoin network. So now the VideoCoin network knows what a worker is. So like, um, as you can see the CPU usage is um, presently saying it's zero percent, um, which means that the worker is not taking any additional CPU usage. So this um, shows the worker set up and ready now. Um, so let's bring back up the terminal. And before that, uh, what we'll do now is we will create an actual job and then see how um, the worker responds to the job that we submit to it. So let us try a file demo. So I'll call it file demo, I'm gonna do file upload. I'm doing file upload because file upload is one of our new features that we've released with K2 and one of the most asked features also. And I'm gonna say HLS as output, say copy and I'll just create a stream. And by the way, all of this can be done through the API. I'm doing this with the UI, UI UX, um, so it's way easier to grasp. Uh, I'm gonna go and get a file. It's one of the trailers I have here, drag and drop. This is one of the cool things that you can do uh, with the studio interface, you can just drag and drop a file. If you're using the API, these uploads, you'll have to provide a, a file and then manually upload it um, through the API. Or you can even provide an URL and then the video call network will pull that file from the URL. But, you know, I'm just gonna 
So the stream is now ready. So let's keep an eye on the workers here um, to the right, because you see it's now idle. And then I'll also bring up the terminal window here where it's saying um, there's no task and it's waiting for work. So yeah, so keep an eye on the idle, notifi idle notification here on Devadatta's worker and also the terminal window here, as you can see, it's saying no task. So I'm gonna go and start the stream. Remember that there is no other worker on the network right now because it's a demo and it's a controlled environment where I've only added one third party worker and as more and more third party workers come on the network, um, there'll, be, there'll be more workers available. And as you can see, immediately you see this on, onto the left, onto the right, immediately the workers started getting the work and then it's now busy. So they with us workers now busy doing work right now, finishing up the transcoding, taking it and submitting it back into the network. So it's the same transcoding, the stream output is, is working on it. And as soon as the processing is ready, you'll see that stream available for playback. And, and as you can see, um, even the worker, as soon as it came, up, came on online, you can see the net location of the uh, worker uh, in this case, because I'm in San Jose, you're seeing this and um, come up in San Jose. And there you go. So like the file is now ready for you, for your consumption. And the worker is came back to idle status. As you see, finished up the transcoding um, and just saying waiting for task and finished up the work. And in this case, um, all of the uh, protocol, you could, you, could, you could see all of the protocol events here. And the HLS file is available for you to play back. Ugh, I can't with that guy. There you go. So this is really cool because like I explained, this worker I just now set up using a Docker image. It hardly took me five minutes to set it up. And our worker came up on the VideoCon network, accepted jobs, finished it, sent it back to us, and got, and after it, finished the work, it went back into idle state, waiting for more work. So our whole vision with VideoCoin Network is to make it really simple for people to get on board and become workers. So as we get more and more third-party workers, uh, we hope to get the worker list full and across the world. Um, and workers can take jobs from different location, different geographical locations. Hope And we hope that there's workers all around the world so that geographically co-located work can land on workers close by because in, in terms of video work, it's always good to have close by workers because the latency is going to be dramatically lower. And one of the other really interesting things and great innovation that we have done in our network is, let's assume that there are no third party workers, which kind of is not, not, um, not an ideal situation, but if there's absolutely no third party workers available, what we've done is we've created a new feature where um, if there's no workers available, VideoCoin Network automatically on demand spins up a worker and then makes sure that the job is completed. So all of these, um, all of these 30 or 40 nodes um, that are totally available on the network right now are sitting, um, are idle and offline, meaning that they come up online when, um, when there is work and if there's no other worker available, they come up online and accept the work and finish it. As we were speaking, it looks like somebody um, uh, created some work on the network and that's being assigned, assigned and run. So that's why the three other nodes have popped up. And as always, you can see everything that's happening on the video call network using our block explorer. So this is a great demo, great demo video for me to make. And I was, uh, and this is a feature that's super exciting for us because it took us a lot of time and effort to make something this complex where you have decentralized workers uh, accepting complex video jobs, finishing it up and submitting it back to the network is, um, is, uh, is a huge accomplishment in our eyes. So thank you very much for joining us and then look forward to more videos and demos um, in, uh, in, in, in the days to come. Thank you.